What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com. Why? Because I signed myself. Now, I'm super excited to show you guys this snippet. I actually dropped this interview, but near the end, I had this great conversation with a producer named Malix, where he's really informing me on some of these things that major producers really don't want you to know. And it really has a lot to do with leasing beats on the internet or having a huge brand getting major placements with top-notch artists, you know, super producers like Metro Boomin, things like that. If you have any opinion on that debate, I think he brings a strong perspective, but also a lot of things that are going on in the background that'll maybe even change your mind. What's your advice, producers really today, in terms of what approach they should take? Should I go towards placement? Should I not go, go towards placements? Or either way, like what mentality should they be moving with? Um, I say do both. I mean, okay. it won't hurt you to do both. Like if you're sitting around making beats every day, then you should have enough beats to put on your website to, to lease or sell exclusive that way. And you have the other, the other batch that you kind of keep stashed away your fire <laughs> or when, or when you got those connects that really need that from you and they ask for that then you can send them that, you know? And then if they don't, if they don't get back to you within a, whatever time is comfortable for you, you could always take those beats and then put them on your website. Mm. Still okay. your intellectual property. And it's like, for me, that's, I mean, you, you might as well do it that way instead of grinding and making beats and sending them off and then going to work at a gas station. You know, no disrespect to anybody that works at gas stations, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? If you're going to work a job, if you got to grind anyway, you might as well grind on something that's going to bring you some kind of income every week. Okay. So, yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. I only ask that because I've talked to a lot of producers who feel like them doing online beats is a bad look for their brand. So they think they, they've yeah. been doing out online beats is going to keep them from getting somewhere in the industry. But you're saying that's not a fact. As a matter of fact, you talked about internet money. So you, you're yeah. saying that's not a fact. I mean, but yeah, it's all in the eye of the beholder, man. Like, and your perspective. If you're, okay. if you're a cat, bro, like, like, like I'm a, I've always been a huge fan of Illmind. Like Illmind was one of my favorite producers. Yeah. And I remember um, he said something online about, actually about i think he had just interviewed taz taylor and all that and i'm just i'm watching from a distance i don't know any of these guys i'm just watching and just learning and um i remember him saying something like do you want to do you want to create timeless music or do you want to create something like cookie cutter that is going to be flash in the pan and gone tomorrow or something like that with no creativity like and i was like that's kind of that's a polarizing statement and it's kind of like, it depends on your perspective because a lot of these guys think they're making timeless music and it, it might end up being timeless music, but you're saying that just because it's like a quick beat make kind of thing, like in leasing, like that it's not going to be timeless at some point. I, I, I forget what I said to him, but I tweeted something to him. And, um, and then I remember shortly after that, and I don't think my tweet had anything to do with this, but I remember shortly after that, he did another interview with Taz or something like that. And, and his position had changed. Mm. And I think it was because he, he, and the way he explained it in his video, and I'm sure the video is still out there. I think he started realizing that like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was right from an industry perspective. Yeah. The, the, leaser is not really doing as much harm to the industry as we think they're doing. And then from the beat leasing side, I think they started looking at it like, okay, I've got some legit placements. Like maybe the industry isn't as bad as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just perspective, man. I think, I think whatever you can deal with, you can deal with. And, you know, you got lawyers and, you know, people that got your back you know, if you got your team solid, you know, I think you can make it, you know, both ways. But for me and my sanity and what I'm going through, what I've been through, yeah, I just feel like um, 
beat leasing and marketing to the masses was better for my brand than trying to act like, oh, I'm Grammy winner, you know, like, you know what I mean? Trying to just flex. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, not, I'm, not, I'm not one of those dudes, you know? That's crazy that you said it that way, though, man, because when you talked about just talking about how the industry found out is not as well, at least in ill mind found out is not as bad as he thought it was and vice versa. It sounds like a bunch of fear mongering, right? It's, uh, you know what I mean? In the same way yeah. people do with Democrats and Republicans or race wars and things like that. You know what I mean? It's like right, so much right. of it is really just a fear of being um, done away with. Shunned. Yeah. Fear, fear of being shunned, I think. Yeah, exactly. Because this is one thing I know. I'm going to tell you this. Again, I'm not dropping no names. Okay. But I know for a fact, I know for a fact that there are at least three people I know of, three major producers that I know of that I just found out about this year, they're actually leasing beats online through a different name. Mm. I'll leave that right there. <laughs> interesting. interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. Because it's, it's almost like, okay, I'm an established producer and it might be three to six more months before I get another placement. And then I'm turning around, I'm looking at beat stars and air bit and all this. And I'm seeing these kids pulling in, you know, five figures a month. I got to get some of that coin. Like I got it. I got it. Like who wouldn't, but at the same time, it's like, yo, if I'm a multi-platinum Grammy winning producer, blah, blah, blah. If I put myself out there, like as a, that I'm leasing beats then that might discredit me a bit. I think yeah. that's where their mind state is. But when I look at it, I'm like, yo, what's the alternative? I'm sure you got thousands of beats sitting on your hard drive. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality. To me, that's, that's, that's like, pride, bro. That's just pride. I mean, that's the reality. And then it's like a brand management thing, right? You, like you dilute the brand to, in some people's eyes if they found out I can get your beat for, I don't know, $300. So I'm not going to pay you $10,000 for this beat. Like, it's just... Yeah. It's just yeah. The nation. I mean, I guess. but look, but look, man. Um, it's it's economics one on one, right? 100%. If it, if I go look, if I can go up the street to, let's say Tom Thumb. There's a store here called Tom Thumb, right? It's uh -huh. a grocery store. I don't know if y'all have that out there. Anyway, it's it's notorious for having a little bit higher prices for their what they got really nice store right yeah you got this other store called aldi and it's like low price you know what i mean i love aldi because i go in there i get some good food i get it for the low i'm good yeah right now if aldi started carrying one of the or all the same products that tom thumb was carrying would people still go to tom thumb For the most part. Huh? For the most part. See, to me, that's a nuance. But, I see, I think that, no, that's a trick question. Because yeah. a lot of people would still go to Tom Thumb yeah. just out of pride alone. I was about to say, that's what I was like, that's a nuance uh, question. The co co yeah. From a commodity standpoint, the people just thinking economically, you'll have a lot of people who wouldn't. Or right. they would still. But then for the people who are going for aura, the feeling of, you know, I'm on this other thing. I'm 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 yeah, a higher yeah. class and things like Flexing. that. They're not gonna they're not gonna go. They're, All the flexors are gonna stay going to that other store. They're gonna stay going to Tom Thumb or look down on Tom Thumb and go somewhere else. That's uh, that's still lying to them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but but here's and here's what I always told here's what I always told people that like because I had a few people come at me when I started doing like this online beat leasing thing, like yo, how can you do that, man? Like you your beats are fire and you know, you should be selling them a lot higher. And I'm like, okay, well, I could sell these for five grand and maybe get like two sales a year. Or I could sell these joints for, or lease them for $25 a pop and keep all the rights and, and release them a thousand times if I want to. Mm. Right. And so they were like, nah, but you, you know, you're cheapening the craft or whatever. And I was like, look, um, do you think, the Jordan line is worried about Converse. 
Yeah. It, it, look, if you, and I, I love Converse, by the way, if, yeah. if you, if you're the type of person that likes to rock your Chucks, you weren't going to buy Jays anyway. Either you didn't want to spend that bread or you don't like the shoes or you don't have the bread to begin with. Right. But that doesn't cheapen the Jordan brand. And I don't really have much to add to that. I mean, Malix has gotten all this respect from his journey from winning a Grammy with Eminem all the way to even leasing beats on the internet himself. I just want to know what you guys opinion of all this is. It's really interesting. I love topics like this. If you love content and conversations like this, we have plenty of exclusive ones in brandmannetwork.com. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.